Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, uh, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, my name as introduced is uh, Pamela Tsanga, and I am the country director for Water Aid here in Zambia. Uh, to start with, thank you for the opportunity to share uh, the work that we are doing around cholera together with our various stakeholders here in Zambia, many of whom are on the call um, this afternoon here in Zambia. So maybe to start with, just to give a little bit of context to our work and why we as Water Aid in Zambia in particular have been working on cholera. And I just want to point out a few drivers of cholera in Zambia and specifically pointing out those that relate to our mandate as an organization. So we focus exclu exclusively on WASH as an organization, but also we understand that for us, you know, as a country, and indeed, you know, uh, anywhere else in the world, for us to get the full benefits um, of WASH, we need to ensure that we integrate WASH uh, in other key sectors such as health, so education, nutrition, and other relevant sectors. But uh, in terms of the cholera work, I think as an organization, we decided to collaborate with other stakeholders in the country looking at uh, the key drivers of cholera in Zambia. So the first one that I will allude to is the low wash coverage, uh, particularly in peri-urban areas and in rural areas. Um, in Zambia, some of the areas that uh, often record the first index cases um, of cholera in the country uh, if you look at the coverage here and there and the sources of water, you will find that many of them access drinking water from um, shallow wells. Um, also in terms of sanitation, many of them use pit, like, uh, pit latrines. And because of that, the combination of shallow wells uh, and uh, um, pit latrines, we have high levels of groundwater contamination. So again, that's another area of interest for us as an organization in terms of interventions. Other areas include poor hygiene practices. Uh, and so we have been working around that. Uh, but more broadly also, we have been looking at uh, the policies that are in place and uh, the legal frameworks in place to support uh, interventions around cholera, but also to address you know, these drivers of cholera. So that is another area that we focus on. Of course, I'm sure Dr. Kapaya and colleagues will add on a lot more. So I'm just pointing out the ones that really um, influenced or motivated us uh, to work uh, on cholera and to support government and other stakeholders' efforts to address cholera in this country. So of course, as uh, uh, many of you will know, we had a cholera outbreak, a major cholera outbreak in 2017 going into 2018. Um, and as an organization, I think for us, that was uh, an even uh, bigger impetus to uh, work with uh, different stakeholders to address specifically the wash elements uh, um, uh, as the drivers of cholera. In terms of uh, uh, what the country is doing, I think as alluded to uh, in the opening remarks, um, the country has really shown leadership uh, um, in ending cholera and uh, Zambia did support the cholera resolution. So of course we supported uh, as an organization locally, the Ministry of Health uh, in uh, presenting or moving that resolution at the World Health Assembly. I think one of the key things for us is the production of the multi-sector, uh, uh, multi-stakeholder cholera elimination plan. And as an organization, again, uh, we participated actively um, and worked uh, um, collaboratively with others to input in the development of uh, um, the MCEP. So the Zambia MCEP, if you look at you know, what is contained in there and in terms of um, the anticipated investment level, it is about 67% uh, focused on WASH. So for us, this is also recognizing the fact that uh, access to wash is, of course, a significant driver um, in terms of uh, cholera. So some of the specific things that we have done um, in supporting the work around cholera, um, we have worked with the Ministry of Health 
through the Zambia National Public Health Institute. I think this has been the main contact for us uh, where we have uh, supported coordination uh, mechanisms or activating the coordination mechanisms under the MCEP. Now, when we had the cholera outbreak in 2017, 2018, one of the things that we uh, saw that we could add value to as an organization was bringing together stakeholders to have a very well coordinated response uh, to the epidemic that we had. Um, being an organization that currently hosts uh, what we call the NGO Wash Forum that brings together other NGO actors, we saw it as an opportunity of linking the work that we do as NGOs uh, with the government response. And uh, for us as an organization, from that point, it became an opportunity to contribute to strengthening coordination um, in the cholera response. And so we have continued to support this uh, uh, with through the Zambia National Public Health Institute. And so a number of coordination platforms uh, that are articulated in the MCEP are now activated. And so we've been working very closely with other stakeholders on that. We also tried to um, look at influencing our members of parliament because one of the areas that we noted is that in terms of investment um, in WASH in general, it is very low. But also um, when you look at the national budgets that have been presented since uh, the development of the MCEP, uh, we haven't seen any clear allocation to the MCEP in the national budget. So because of that, we decided that uh, we needed to engage members of parliament. And so of course, with the support of uh, ZNPHI, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Water, uh, we undertook um, a political economy analysis um, of cholera um, in Zambia. And based on that, we were able to uh, engage the members of parliament uh, to uh, highlight to them the challenges that we see in terms of cholera and the areas that we need to address, particularly in terms of investment. So we've also been able to uh, bring together a group of members of parliament that we are calling champions uh, to help us in the fight against cholera. And so these are the ones that we were able to share this political economy analysis and the brief on cholera that we did to highlight what we need to do as a country um, to um, end cholera. Um, apart from that, I think our area of interest has also been very much around hygiene, of course, recognizing that uh, even if we improve access to water and sanitation with poor hygiene practices, we'll still be able to record uh, um, a lot of cases of cholera. So together with the Ministry of Health, we have launched a hygiene campaign that we are calling the Kutuba campaign, uh, which is basically um, in a, a local language, uh, uh, meaning cleanliness. And so for us, uh, this campaign uh, has been implemented in various parts of the country through the Ministry of Health uh, with uh, various stakeholders uh, um, uh, in the wash sector, as well as those uh, in the health sector uh, as well. Um, apart from that, I think in terms of other engagement, we have tried really to uh, look at uh, um, identifying um, travel spots in terms of cholera. So one of the things that we did in this 2017-2018 outbreak was to also do a vulnerability assessment in terms of cholera uh, to just show some of the areas that were uh, uh, particularly prone to cholera. Uh, since then, I think we've gone on to try and do a mapping of the hotspots because uh, uh, government, the Minister of Health, uh, through ZNPHI, have identified uh, cholera hotspots in the country. And so we have picked up on a few of those uh, where we have uh, done comprehensive mapping to just look at uh, what is missing and what are the key drivers of cholera in those areas, specifically pointing out you know, facilities that are in use, such as the water points, um, the sanitation facilities, uh, and the state of those facilities, so that if we are doing any intervention, uh, we are able to specifically target uh, um, specific facilities uh, to bring them up to standard where they can be able to uh, provide clean drinking water, for instance, and uh, 
um, have adequate sanitation facilities that will not uh, pollute or contaminate uh, groundwater. I think um, to just close in a nutshell, I think we have uh, done a number of activities, a number of uh, um, collaborative events, uh, particularly with uh, ZNPHI. And uh, we have really uh, also um, tried to um, assist in terms of, well, like I said, lobbying and advocacy, because we know that it's not easy for ZNPHI and for the Ministry of Water as well to um, engage government, to central government, the Ministry of Finance in particular, to invest a lot more in cholera. So this remains a big point uh, for our advocacy work for us to begin to operationalize the multi-stakeholder cholera elimination plan. We need investment to start coming through. But nonetheless, I think so far, we have seen a lot of commitment and dedication from ZNPHI, from the various ministries, to try on their own within their budgets to address uh, components um, of this uh, plan. But what would be nice is to have a proper and full investment and resourcing of the plan by central government. And so this is something that we continue to work on. So I will end there, um, as I know that the other colleagues uh, um, will be able to provide uh, a lot more details uh, also of our engagement uh, with them uh, in the fight against uh, cholera. Thank you.